Okay, now let's take a look at the concept of what's called electric field lines. This is what's called a visual representation of the electric field E. Suppose there is a region filled with electric field, with an invisible electric field. I can draw a visual representation of the field. All I have to do is put in a positive test charge, positive Q. Okay, and uh, let's say the test charge is here. What I found when I put the test charge here is that it experiences a force this way. Okay, it experiences a force this way. And next, when I move a charge along, I find the electric field, the electric field points in a different direction. Okay, it experiences a force in this direction, in that direction, whatever. And uh, what I can do is I can draw what's called an electric field line. This line is always such that the electric field at every point along that line is tangential to the line. For example, the electric field here at this point is like this. The electric field there is like this. The electric field there is like this. Okay, then this line is called an electric field line. Why are we interested in electric field lines? Because once again, it gives you a visual idea of the field distribution. For example, if I have a positive charge, how does one draw representative electric field lines? Well, suppose I put a positive test charge here. What kind of field would it produce, uh, would it experience? Well, experience a force like that, right? Like that. You put it there, it's like that. It always points really away, okay? So a field line would be a straight line like this. And of course, you can draw other straight lines radiating away from the source, which is a positive charge, all right? Now, what if you have a negative charge? Then you put a positive test charge there. The only difference is that the field now reverses the direction. So for a negative charge, the field lines are also straight lines converging at the location of the charge, except that they all point inward, not outward. So you can think of a positive charge as the source of electric field lines and the negative charge as the sink of the electric field lines. All right. Now, what if I have a pair of charges, positive and negative? What is the electric field line distribution throughout the space? Well, imagine if you put a charge along the line joining these two, then this guy, the positive charge, will push it away to the, towards negative charge, and the negative charge will pull it towards itself. So overall, the electric field line connecting the two is just like this. Okay. Now, if you put another charge here, this guy experiences the force, this positive charge experiences the force this way from the positive particle and that way from negative particles overall you add them up you get a you get a you get a force like that right so you can do the same thing to analyze the direction of the force here and there and so on you will find that the another electric field line will be like this then you can draw another line like this another line like this and then like this and so on all right you can continue to draw. You see field lines go into the negative charge and they emerge from the positive charge. Emerge from the positive charge. It's like this. Okay, now I want to draw some more lines in this region. Uh, the density of the lines will represent, give you a visual representation of the strength of the field. Where the lines are denser, the field is stronger. Here, the, the lines are uh, more sparse because the field is weaker. Okay, so it does give you a visual representation of both the strength and the direction of the electric field. Uh, one thing about the electric field lines is that they will never cross each other. Okay, so you get a field like this, another field line like, like that, they cross each other, this is wrong. Okay, it never happens. And why is that? Because imagine what happened if you put a particle here, a positive particle here. By definition, the positive charge will experience a force along the direction of the field line. But there are two field lines here. So does it point this way or does it point that way? Right? It, there is only one way. Okay? So you cannot possibly point both this way and that way in the same location. So field lines will never cross each other. You see the way I draw it? They never cross each other. Okay. Now let's take a look at um, how a charged particle might, ex might uh, move if you put it in an electric field. 
This is very important to uh, in many applications. For example, uh, the uh, so-called cath array tubes, in other words, uh, the old old-fashioned TV. What I have here is a very simple case where you have a uniformly charged plate, negative charge. Here is a uniformly charged positive charge plate. In between them, there is a uniform electric field. You will learn in the next chapter for sure that you know you get a uniform field. In fact, we learned that before as well. Because remember we said, if you have an infinitely large uniformly charged sheet, you get a uniform field pointing away from it, right? And here is another infinitely charged sheet. It points towards it because of the negative charge. So overall, the field is uniform in between them, okay? That's how we produce a uniform field, by having a pair of positive and negative charged plates. Now imagine a negative charge, say, such as an electron, okay? You move it, you give it initial velocity, okay? V0. Let's say V0 is parallel to the sheet. So in other words, it's perpendicular to electric fields. The electric fields are like that, okay? Pointing from the positive to the negative charge. Let's take a look at how this particle is going to move. Okay, now we are going to draw an x-axis parallel to the sheets and a y-axis perpendicular to the sheets, which is parallel to the electric field. Um, you can see as the uh, charge enters the field, it's going to experience a force. And that force is opposite to the field because the charge is negative. Okay, so on the one hand, in the x-direction, it keeps on moving because there is no force in the x-direction. On the other hand, in the y direction, there is a uniform force pushing it downwards. Have we seen this somewhere before? A particle moving at a constant velocity in x direction and being uniformly extended in the y direction. What do we call that before? Well, that would be a, a projectile, right? So basically, this electron will behave like a projectile. Okay, so it's going to, uh, you know, the, the, the shape of the trajectory would be parabolic. Okay, so in the x direction, we can write, uh, we can write um, x equals what? Let's start from origin. Let's say the origin is right here when it enters the field. Okay, it's just uh, v naught times t. Right? What about the y direction? Well, the y direction, y, will be equal to. There is no initial velocity, but it's uniformly accelerated. So it's one half a y t squared. Right? Uniformly accelerated. Now. What's AY equal to? It is the acceleration of this electron in a y direction. It is equal to the electric force divided by uh, the mass of the electron. The electric force, Fe, divided by the mass of the electron. Fe equals to the electric field times the charge. The charge is E. The electric field is capital E. You divide it by M. Okay. We can plug that in, and then we can calculate the trajectory if you want to. Okay, we can we can figure out where it lands after it goes through this uh, region of the electric field. We can calculate, we can predict exactly where it's going to end up. This will be a very simple example of how a charged particle would behave in the electric field. But of course, in general, we can have more complicated situations where the field may not be uniform, that sort of thing. We'll also be doing an experiment. Okay, we'll be doing an experiment in which uh, the we have a, a whole bunch of electrons going through a uniformly charged uh, pair of plates, so, so that will be deflected. Before we end our discussion in this chapter, I wish to look at a couple of more examples. This time, uh, we have to look at more of the vector aspect of the electric field. One, one example is something like this. We have a semicircular loop, okay, uniformly charged to a char linear charge density lambda. So lambda, that's the Electric, field, electric charge per unit lens. Okay, and here is the center of that semicircle, and I want to figure out what is the electric field at point O due to this semicircle. And the radius of the semicircle is R, big R, which is a constant. Okay, again, this is a uniformly distributed, continuous distribution, so therefore I'm going to have to cut it into little pieces here. Uh, little cut, cut, cut this little piece here. Uh, we call the charge dQ. Okay, dQ. And then how does dQ affect the electric field? It contributes to the electric field like this. Here's a line here, and it points this way, right? Points this way. We call it dE. Okay, this angle is theta, so is that angle. 
But overall, I know, when you add everything up, you find the electric field eventually will have to point this way, assuming Q is positive, right? Because of the symmetry of the problem. So, just like what we had before, we're going we're gonna to pick up not just DE, we're going to pick up DEX, the X component of DE. Because only the X components will survive after you integrate over everything. So therefore, I'm going to find DEX, okay? Which is DE times what? This angle is theta, so it's sine theta. Then I can integrate over DEX later. Okay, what's DE equal to? DE equals K and then lambda, actually DQ, K times DQ over R squared, this distance R. But uh, lambda is just, uh, I'm sorry, DQ is just lambda times, uh, lambda times what? Times this lens. What's this lens? Okay, this is the lens part of an arc. If the, if the radius is R, the angle extended is D theta, then this lens would be R D theta, right? Okay, this is R D theta, okay. So you divide this by R to the power 2, that will give you DE, right? Time sine theta. So what you can do now is to integrate, you get DX. You get E equals DEX. Now you can integrate between 0 and pi for theta, or you can also integrate between 0 to half of pi and then double it because you know this half and that half contributes evenly. So let's do that. Going from 0 to half of pi, then you double it. Half of pi. Uh, lambda over R, K, E, these are just constants. And then sine theta, D theta. Okay, sine theta, D theta, integrate, you get a negative cosine theta, and then go from 0 to half of pi, the answer is 1. So the answer overall is 2 lambda, K, E over R. That is the expression for the electric field at point at point O, pointing outwards like that.